today we are going to be talking about my skin reaction that I've had to a number of compounds, namely um, uh, nootropics, SARMs, and different anabolic steroids. Sorry, I have the dry mouth. So um, basically, first of all, we're going to get we're going to get to get into my first experience with this. About ten years ago. I was taking modafinil. I only took it for two days. Um, I heard Dave Asprey and people, Tim Ferriss, talk about how wondrous this compound was for productivity, focus, and getting shit done. So basically, I bought a bunch of modafinil. I was very excited to try it. And um, I bought armodafinil as well. I took it for two days. And by the end of the second day, I had itching wrists and ankles, they were really itchy, and I could see my skin like aging in front of my eyes. Now, this was quite um, concerning, being as I was in my like, I don't know, mid twenties, you don't wanna like see, look at your hand and see your skin getting all like weird and wrinkly and like old looking. Anyway, that was a crazy experience. I I, um, I phoned up like the, uh, NHS and I was like telling them like look I've taken this and my skin's aging in front of my eyes they're like shush <laughs> no um I, I thought anyway that was a crazy I thought I was having a, an allergic reaction a skin reaction and you can have Stephen Johnson syndrome and bad heart conditions if you uh have bad interactions with modafinil a very small percentage of people do and I thought like oh I'm having a skin reaction I actually went into A&E I was that concerned they, they tested my heart um but yeah it was this skin reaction is the first time I've seen it. Okay, now, since then, I've taken, the first cycle was testosterone, and, sorry, my moustache is getting up my nose, oh. Um, first cycle was testosterone, 500 milligrams, and that was fine, until I added in oral LGD. And then I, I was noticing some like skin aging kind of underneath my eyes, some lines forming. I was noticing, yeah, my legs were getting very scaly looking. I don't know. Things weren't looking good. Um, so I stopped that after a while and then I went back to testosterone. I actually felt like I got stronger when I took out the Psalms and just went back to 500 milligrams of test without the added Psalms. Interesting. Maybe there, who knows why? Maybe they don't activate some stuff as strongly and they were getting in the way of the testosterone binding to the androgen receptor. Who knows? Who knows? This is a hypothesis. So after that, I did injectable LGD because it has less side effects, according to Tony Huge, uh, but it has more. Um, different ones, different side effects. Um, more like steroids instead of SARMs. Anyway, I did the injectable LGD and straight away I noticed that I was getting some like weird skin aging effects and I was like, I don't like this. So I stopped that and I went in, straight on for a cycle of low testosterone and um, medium to high NPP. And that went quite well. By the end, I added in some d -ball. And again, yeah, I noticed some skin aging. Like basically, uh, my girlfriend was like, dude, your legs look like an old person's legs. Like kind of scaly skin that's very shiny with um, like, so it looks like it's got bad collagen production because it's not soft and supple. Lots of fine wrinkles instead of being thick and like luscious. So basically that was happening where the, um, the barbell was resting on my back. Bear in mind, like some of the lifts, especially the banded lifts, you've got, 340 kilos or whatever on your back at the top of it. So it's enough weight to actually like, you know, do some damage to the skin kind of, but you know, the skin should repair. My skin was just flaking off big sheets of it that were like inches in diameter. were just flaking off where this bar was resting on my back. I was getting like old looking hands and stuff was not good. So after that, went back to testosterone for some time, adding in the occasional psalm and this and that, adding in some Anavar. I noticed that when I was taking Anavar, that underneath my eyes, I was getting more bags like the next day and stuff. I'm like, what is going on? I was taking Anavar on a Sunday just to get a bit of more neural drive for those heavy compound one rep maxes. Um, basically, that was all happening. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So I went back to just testosterone because of 
this skin reaction and I went to loads of doctors, loads. I went to some dermatologists and some steroid doctors. I consulted them about it. They couldn't help me. Um, I talked to my friend who's a GP. He was, hadn't got any information. And uh, then more recently, I tried Nupept. Nupept is great. I love it. It, it, it was amazing. Um, but after the first day, I did notice that the skin on the back of my hand did seem to be aging, um, looking just worse than it was beforehand. I'd recovered just taking testosterone for a few months, and I'd seem to have recovered quite a lot of the damage that was done um, during the uh, steroid abuse previously. And then basically, yeah, I took this new pet after three days. I'm like, damn, my skin looks awful what's going on i'm like taking photos of it it's all dry on the back of my hand like really dry again contacted dermatologists and stuff they're all like oh it looks looks dry um yeah put some moisturizer on it um and then, then i'm telling them i want to know what's going on why am i having this reaction i shouldn't be having this reaction other people aren't having this reaction what's going on so then after that um contacted allergists they said they couldn't help me um and yeah, that was my experience with Nupet, an amazing compound. For me, it allowed me to focus and um, just be kind of a version of me, which is like some kind of super mega achiever. But the price I have to pay for that is looking like a an 80 year old ball sack, basically. So I'm not, I'm not down with that exchange. Um, uh, sorry, that's my dog rolling on her back. She wants some attention. So, okay, we're getting to the new pet. Now, um, you know, and think about this. I was taking, one of the main reasons why we all take steroids is to look better. Come on. Okay, yeah, I want to be European powerlifting champion. Yeah, that would be nice. But who doesn't want to look a bit more jacked, muscular, um, and attractive in their day-to-day -day life? And yeah, um, these compounds were having the effect of making me bald, and having, making my skin look really old, not cool. So um, I'm just, test is best uh, right now, test is best. So uh, I contacted Leo Longevity and he had some ideas about what could be causing this. Now, because, um, because there uh, were things that were all stimulating my sympathetic nervous system. So um, when you're on steroids, you, your fight and flight, your fight or flight sympathetic nervous system is more activated and um, you're just a bit more like ready to go, you know? And um, yeah, basically the other two compounds, the modafinil and the Nupept are both stimulants of some description. So he thought, right, it's a sympathetic nerve system. It's kind of having this response. And I was like, no, 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 because I was taking 500 mg of test. That was activating my synth synth sympathetic nervous system. It wasn't having the problem. And then there's the YK11 and S4. They don't seem to have this issue. Whereas like all of the other um, anabolic compounds I've tried have this issue. So um, <clears throat> basically, his next hypothesis was, oh, and another thing that I told him was that the uh, the equipoise, the boldenone that I was taking more recently, um, it was, I noticed it had an effect on the skin on the back of my hand on the same day as injecting it. And because it's got such a long half-life, Leo hypothesized that it's not a typical, like, autoimmune thing i don't know basically it's just i don't know it's it is some type of autoimmune thing you know what he spoke so fast i'm i'm still a bit confused about what was said personally but um basically he think it, he thinks it is some type of immune response that's being mounted in the skin because basically equipoise such a long half-life if i'm noticing effect on the same day as the injection that means that um it's not working in my body yet. So I, I don't know, basically my body, he thinks my body's just recognizing it um, instead of it having like a genetic expression of my, cause you know, steroids, 
they make your genes express proteins differently. So, you know, maybe it could be doing that in the skin, but instead of that, I think it's an allergic kind of an immune response that's being mounted. So what he said to do is test. So we can test if it's an immune response by looking at inflammatory markers. So, right, I'm gonna read from my notes here. Um, basically, the idea is to test my blood when I am, before I've taken anything, basically, the day beforehand or the day before I take the stuff. Then I take the stuff um, and I can take like a whole bunch of different things that cause a skin reaction just for one day. So it would be, um, I could take that Nupept for sure. Um, that's a variant of Parastam. So I've got some different Parastams as well. But I think, as we know, Nupept causes it to go with a Nupept because I haven't even tried these other Parastams. I'm, I'm not worried. I've got all these things that I want to try and review and like, like see how it can elevate my life. And um, yeah, I'm like, I'm having all these bad reactions. Let's not even try. So anyway, <sighs> sorry, Kurt, that's, that's my dog. Um, basically, uh, so um, I would take a blood test and then take uh, the compounds in question, maybe some LGD, injectable LGD, some boldenone, um, a bit of Nupept just for one day. And then the next day test some infl inflammatory markers. So first of all, you check the cheap ones being um, C-reactive protein and fibrinogen. And um, yeah, if I see an elevation in these numbers, then you can deduce that it's the immune system being activated. And um, yeah, it's an immune response. Now he said, if I didn't see anything from these, I should then do the same experiment again once the symptoms have subsided, but this time test IL IL-1 beta. IL-6 and TNF-alpha. So uh, the TNF-alpha is tumor necrosis factor alpha. So um, yeah, those are the two tests, that I, those are the two different types of tests. There's a cheap one and an expensive one. So I'm gonna do that after this powerlifting comp once my systemic inflammation has come down a bit because I think it's gonna be a little bit elevated um, as I, I get ready to muck, mix out some numbers. So, okay. Uh, another thing that, um, I have been instructed to do is to take some supplements that should help mop up some of this inflammatory response that's going on. So the first ones that I need to take on an empty stomach are vitamin C, one gram, glycine, one gram, NAC, one gram, alpha lipoic acid. I'm not sure of the amount that EPA, one gram and Tudka. And I gotta take this three times a day on an empty stomach. Then with food, it's garlic extract, cocoa via, which is a brand, um, thera curcumin, which is another brand of curcumin extract, um, moringa, moringa extract, uh, sulforaphane. And for this, you know, hey, this is so much money spending on supplements that I, I'm i gonna grow the sulfur affair. I'm gonna grow me some broccoli sprouts. I've done it before. I'll do it again, damn it. But um, broccoli sprouts taste disgusting. So I'm gonna make these health blends every, and like have them, and I'm just gonna chug them down and not enjoy them. Because at the moment I have them with fruit and kale, and it's, they're pretty delicious. I've got one in the fridge right now. Um, but this time I'm gonna need to just chug it down because it's got broccoli sprouts in it disgusting and astralagus so those are the different compounds that i'm going to have with food and then at night time i'm instructed to have 40 milligrams of short acting melatonin and 10 milligrams of long acting melatonin um i actually um i i get some weird blood vessel response i'm getting so many side effects from all this stuff it's crazy uh like all these performance enhancing things it's yeah it's not optimal really for health. Um, so I'll go into this in a different video maybe. Um, but with the melatonin having the short acting version, I found that it was making some blood vessels pulsate on the left side of my head. I don't want that. Um, I've been told that pulsating blood vessels can be like a sign of a stroke or heart attack. 
not cool. That's not what we want. So, um, and I did some research. Melatonin increases growth hormone, and it also um, can affect the blood flow in different areas of the body. Um, increase it in like the the arms, decrease it in the kidney and the brain. So maybe it's putting more blood flow to these external blood vessels. I don't know. I do not know. Um, but anyway, the melatonin is great for mopping up. Uh, I, I, okay, I. I was struggling. I was struggling to listen. He speaks so fast. Um, but yeah, the melatonin is going to help with cognitive health and it's going to just um, deal with a lot of kind of physical stuff uh, in the brain, I think, um, that should like reduce some of these symptoms and maybe even help with the skin symptoms as well. Okay. And then if you really want to get crazy and you want to spend some money on this shiz, if you really wanted to counteract the harmful effects and reduce your systemic inflammation, you would go for intravenous NAC, glutathione, and vitamin C. He was a really big proponent of vitamin C, and this seems like a pretty cheap way to get your systemic inflammation down. So, um, yeah, those are my instructions. And the last thing um, that was the... Uh, da -da, da -da, the last thing I was going to do is get some propanolol. Uh, that's the preferred beta blocker of choice. Now, I did experience a lot of these symptoms when I was in a state of high stress. And um, yeah, my sympathetic system, my nervous system was kind of, was kind of like switched on. And yeah, I did experience some of these different symptoms that I was describing in a state of high stress. And when you are in that state the immune system can act differently. It can act out and it could cause an exaggerated immune response in a very negative way. So having a beta blocker, as soon as I notice any of these symptoms, that is uh, meant to instantly help reduce the symptoms that I'm experiencing. So that is it. That's my summary. That's the main topic that I talked to Leo Longevity about on my phone call. Um, I'm really glad that there's a way to kind of verify it, what impact it's having on some biomarkers and kind of deduce what the, the process is. There's also like, he was talking about different types of collagen production in the skin, that growth hormone produces a, um, how would you call it? like a good looking collagen for the skin. But there's other types of collagens that can get produced which don't look as good. Um, an example he gave was when you apply minoxidil to the face, it can have a shiny, scaly kind of looking skin produced. And that can be as a result of the type of collagen produced. So my skin looked like it had a looked like it had a collagen deficiency of some type. And so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I'm taking collagen. I'm taking vitamin C. It's time to save up some money and buy a bunch of supplements and take them, see what happens, save up some money, get some tests done. And um, yeah, hopefully the cheap tests will reveal the information that I need. And yeah, I'm what I'm really, really interested in is have any of you experienced similar side effects as these to anything like um, basically aging skin, flaky, shiny looking skin, extra fine lines and deep wrinkles forming, um, like bagging underneath the eyes, uh, itchy, because um, he said that itchy, itchiness, the first time I experienced it on the modafinil, that is a classic sign of a an immune reaction. You know, you take antihistamines and you've got an insect bite or something and you're itching. Anyway, anyway, um, have any of you experienced something similar to this? Because I am really, really interested because I've not heard of many other people having this effect i only found one post on like the first page of google yeah i look really hard um i found one post on the first kind of couple of pages of google where someone said that the new pept was affecting their psoriasis and making it worse so that's the only other time i've heard of someone having a similar reaction have any of you had a similar reaction to this i really want to know um 
I know this is quite uh, an in-depth video, but I wanted to make it, I wanted to document it because, yeah, is anyone out there, anyone else having something similar going on? What did you do? Please comment down below. I will be really interested to find out. Anyway, Cruz, I hope you're doing awesome. I hope you have a good day, evening, wherever you are. And until next time, take care of your skin and don't take crazy shit. Catch you later. Peace.